In recent years, China's People's Liberation Army has experienced a dramatic buildup, owing in part to soaring defense budgets. From 2000 to 2016, China's military budget increased annually by about 10%, although this growth subsequently slowed to about 5 to 7% per year. According to People's Republic of China government sources, China's defense budget was $230 billion in 2022, second only to the United States. The budget understates the amount of resources committed to the military. For some, the buildup alone provides reasons to fear conflict. Observers point to the rapid modernization as unambiguous evidence that China is preparing for war with the United States. Today, China's military has an increasingly impressive high-tech arsenal, but its ability to use these weapons and equipment remains unclear. The People's Liberation Army struggles under the legacy of an obsolete command system, rampant corruption, and training of debatable realism, among other issues. President Xi Jinping, the chairman of the Central Military Commission, has directed major efforts to address each of these defects and improve the military's ability to fight and win wars. Since 2016, these organizational and other reforms have gained momentum. But the big question is China's People's Liberation Army is ready for war with the United States and its Western allies despite of its lack military combat experience. Yet the one asset that the PLA conspicuously lacks is combat experience, and she can do little about it short of waging war. But there is no consensus either within Chinese military circles or among foreign analysts on how much it matters. Without the test of combat, the PLA's warfighting prowess remains unproven. Chinese authorities acknowledged this point earlier this year when the military's official newspaper, the PLA Daily, criticized what it described as a peace disease. The debate over how much combat experience matters for the PLA frequently conflates two related but distinct issues. The first concerns the operational significance of combat experience for China's military. In other words, how much does inexperience affect the PLA's potential battlefield performance? The second concerns the strategic significance of the experience. How much does the PLA's relative inexperience affect the potential outcome of a war involving China? Even without battlefield experience, training matters. Considerable evidence shows that better educated soldiers are easier to train, more adept at operating and maintaining sophisticated weapons and platforms, and more capable of executing complex tasks. Both the quantity and quality of military training correlate with superior military performance as well. Military units that undergo realistic, demanding training that simulates combat conditions tend to fare better in battle than those that have not had similar training. The PLA's disastrous performance in the Sino-Vietnam War owed a great deal to such factors. The Cultural Revolution directed by Communist Party Chairman Mao Zedong in the late 1960s decimated the officer class and destroyed much of the professional knowledge that had been accumulated over decades, especially after the fall of Lin Biao, one of the PLA's most talented generals, and his followers. The deleterious consequences are evident in the PLA's reversion to discredited, but low-skill, Tactics like the human wave assault, as well as in the inability of infantrymen to navigate or read maps, and the inaccuracy of artillerymen due to unfamiliarity with procedures for measuring distances and calculating firing distances. Competent management is also required to supply, transport, and support troops in war, and to ensure retention, training, and preparation in peacetime. Technologically advanced militaries depend on systems that link weapons and troops to sensors, satellites, and command centers. But it takes technical and management skills and knowledge to assimilate state-of-the-art technologies into a cohesive, lethal whole. All of these factors can affect how efficiently a society can translate resources into military power. But combat experience does not automatically translate into military advantage. Militaries require institutions, processes, and procedures that can learn the right lessons from battlefield experience and improve their performance. Military academies and research institutes can help systematize insights into superior doctrine or develop more lethal weapons and technologies. The PLA has likely improved its combat readiness from a very low level, but how much remains unclear. Combat experience thus matters for China at the operational and strategic levels, but its significance can be overstated. 
At the operational level, other factors such as leadership, training, preparation, and motivation are more responsible for determining military effectiveness on the battlefield. At the strategic level, a war between Chinese and U.S. forces would likely involve high-intensity combat that neither side has experienced. The outcome of an initial clash could go either way. With adequate preparation and planning and under ideal circumstances, it is possible that China could prevail in the first battle. Weaknesses in these areas are more likely to impair the PLA's performance than inexperience. Inexperience matters mainly in that it obscures the extent of the PLA's deficiencies, impairing an accurate assessment of all the factors that contribute to combat readiness. Whether China had made sufficient efforts to overcome the sizable gaps in the quality of its command, training rigor, integration, and other factors could prove important if the conflict drags on. But even then, the ultimate outcome of a long war between the two global powers will likely be decided by factors beyond the control of generals and admirals, such as economic strength, political cohesion, and national resolve.